Hey y'all, so I wanted to come in and as soon as I record, he comes in. So I wanted to um come back in and address what went on at the end of the last video that I was in the truck talking. It's actually right before everything happened. So I was sitting there and well, at the end of the clip, I started driving off. And right in front of me was a turn that I turned left um, on the side of the hospital. And then you drive and you get on the highway, go on down and you get on the highway, which is the way I go home. So as I was turning, I noticed I got very lightheaded, um, very dizzy. Uh, Y'all know I was already like half asleep. That's why I was like staring those um, days in the days. So I was turning and it's like I could barely keep myself awake like I could I my and it was mainly my left eye like it was really funny it was like my left eye was like closing like they both were but it was like something about my left eye was just it's like this one is going first like it was just out of and so I kept open I kept you know trying to force it open and I'm like what the heck is going on I'm getting dizzy it's like I'm getting lightheaded it's like I'm just zoning out. So, immediately when you turn left, there's also another turn right. And so, I kept looking to see, because there were cars behind me. And so, when I was turning, I just started slowing. Like, I got off the gas. I didn't know what to do. I was lost. I didn't know whether to keep going, pull over. I really just felt like I was just going to stop right there in the middle of the, of the road. So I kept looking back behind me, like so that, cause I didn't want them to hit me, and so I veered on over, and I was like, okay, what the heck is going on? So at that point, I'm thinking, I'm having an anxiety attack, except it wasn't the same as my last because I didn't have the rapid heartbeat, I didn't have um where the sensation where it felt like my throat was swelling or closing. I just felt like everything was getting shallow and um, my eyes was closing, um, dizziness and, and you know, just passing out. So, um, pulled over to the side and I'm like, okay, maybe if it is an anxiety attack, I said, what I normally do if I'm driving or I'm, I'm anywhere, um, I'll call my husband, and usually when he picks up the phone, um, his voice will calm me down, and then I'll ask, what, what you doing? And that's the first thing I have to ask, like, what are you doing? And, you know, as we get to talking, he'll tell me what he's doing, and, you know, his voice is calming me down. But this time, it didn't happen. So, uh, when he picked up the phone, he was like, hello. And I'm paying attention to myself and seeing if anything is calming me down. Um, it wasn't. So I was like, what are you, what you doing? And he, I think at that point he was saying he was almost home. So I said, okay, well, um, and at this point I'm still noticing that everything is still going on. So I'm sitting there like, oh my gosh. So I said, okay, well, I'm about to go this, to the emergency room. And when I'm talking, I notice I start to get, like, too fatigued to talk. Like, I'm having to get up strength or energy to talk. Like, so I couldn't just complete a full sentence. I'm just like, okay, I'm going, well, I'm, well, I'm going to the emergency room and, um, I try to tell him how I'm feeling, but it's like I couldn't get everything out. So I'm just like, you know what? I said, I'm feeling, I'm not feeling okay. Um, and I mentioned to him um, about my blood pressure, which I have to tell you about. So before, which I'm going to tell you now, uh, because I skipped over that part. So before I got to my iron infusion, well, when I got there, they send you to get your vitals checked and then you go get the infusion. When I was getting my vital check, she asked me, she said, is your blood pressure normally this low? Now, I'm thinking she was talking about maybe like 
102 over 60 something, you know, or high 50s or something like that. I'm like, well, um, it's not normally super shooting, but she kind of, then she started saying, because it's, um, and I'm going to, it's been a few days. So I'm going to see if I can remember what she said the first one was. She said it was 94 over 52. Don't quote me, but it was something similar. And so I was like, oh, no, it's not normally that low. I said I've had it happen a couple of times before. Um, and I told my, my old OB about it, but she didn't do anything about it, um, nor care to address it or, you know, say anything other than as long as you're not feeling bad, then it's okay. But each time that it has done that, I I was feeling like terrible, bad to terrible. So she, um, she said, okay, well, let me check it again. And so by the time she's checking it again, the lady from the in, few, in the back came looking for me. She was like, do you have war? And she was like, yeah, this is her right here. And um, she was explaining to her about my blood pressure. And then the lady that came to get me, she was like, you know, whatever. They always do this. You know, just making a little snarky comment. And so um, then when the second check finished, um, she got on the phone. The, the, the lady that was doing my vitals. She got on the phone. was like, I'm going to go ahead and call the nurses um, and let them know. Let them know in the back. Um, about your blood pressure. So uh, at this time, she didn't tell me, but I assumed that it wasn't like it was supposed to be. And even and even she tried to make small talk, you know, during the second check because I don't know if she was trying to buffer it or what, but I didn't really want to talk because I'm like, I don't need to buffer my check. I need it to be correct so I can know what's going on. Um, So we made small chat. I tried not to talk too hard or anything like that or answer too much or too long but so um she was talking to the nurse and the other lady that came to get me from the infusion she was just standing there and she was just still you know and then when she started asking a few questions and talking and stuff like that and um so when I heard she was on the phone she was like yeah I had Miss Ward up here um, I was calling because her blood pressure was low. The first one was such and such, such. And then she said, and I, and I did a recheck, and it was 90 over 44. So I'm like, God, no, 90 over 44. And um, so she was like, um, I don't know who whoever she was talking to, what they said or whatever, but she eventually got the phone, and she gave my paperwork to the lady that came to get me for the infusion. And we went on to the back and we did the infusion. So I don't know. I don't know if that was supposed to be protocol, but it seems like they were just. But when I got to the back, did the infusion, everything was fine. Um, everything was good. Smoothly, I'll say. Uh, so back to when I was talking to my husband. So uh, I told him I was going to emergency room. He was like, okay, well, let me know what's going on. So. When I got to the emergency room, I had to park in the parking garage. I almost just parked at the front door and just left my truck there because, yeah, I was, like, getting weak, weak, weak. So, um, I, but I ended up finding a park close to the door. So, I get out, go in, and when I'm going in, I'm noticing that my legs are shaky. And so, when I got inside, I ended up standing in the wrong line, but I slid in line for a little while, and... I, I, my body was just like, I couldn't stand straight up. It was like, I had to lean on the wall. Um, my legs were shaky, so I couldn't keep my legs straight. I had to bend them because, um, if I straightened them out, my knees would just give. So, um, and they would be really, tr my legs were trembling. My whole body was trembling really. So I eventually go into the right door to go where I was supposed to go. Um, I'm telling a lady I need to have, I need to be checked. I need my blood pressure monitored. Um, and at this point my talking is getting like, I'm getting even weaker and I couldn't, I could barely talk. So I'm trying to force out what I'm trying to say. And, um, she told me to sign in. So I signed in, I sat down. So when I sat down in the waiting area, I leaned my head back 
and I'm beginning to doze off, but I'm too scared to go to sleep because I don't know if I'm going to just pass out of my sleep. I don't know what's going to happen in my sleep because at this point, um, I'm really shaky. I'm jittery. I'm sleepy. And it's like my body is just fatigued. Um, and so I lay back a couple of times off and on sit up because I'm having to adjust myself to keep myself alert. But I noticed is when I closed my eyes, I would start jumping. Like my arm would jump, my leg would jump. Um, you know how when babies or toddlers or even adults when they fall asleep, they they first jump when they get good into the sleep, the nerve jumps. That's how it was. But it was constant for me. And I, in my mind, I'm like, man, is this the Benadryl? Because this is what Benadryl does to me when. This is what it normally does to me when um I take it. It doesn't make me sleepy, but if I'm going to sleep, like if I take it near a time that I'm typically going to sleep, then um that's what happens. Like I just jump, like I can't go to sleep, and it just keeps it keeps jumping me out of my sleep. So that's what the Benadryl normally does to me. So in my mind, I'm like, man, is this the Benadryl that is that's doing this to me? So, um, then I would sit up and then I would get tired again, like we again, and I would just lay back again and just kind of slump in the chair and then it would happen over again. And, um, I would notice like I would just, I would just drift off. Like I was, I wasn't even trying to go to sleep, but it was like, I'm drifting off. And so I kept noticing my head, um, turning like this. And when I would sit up, um, I noticed my head would do this constantly. Like I would just start doing involuntary movements. Um, mainly because I'm trying to keep myself alert, but my body was wanting to just go down. So I'm I'm like I'm I was fighting internally. So um then they eventually called me to the back. And this is where I get really pissed off, but I was too weak. Too weak two weeks to even do anything so a black girl comes to get me i don't know y'all don't understand why i said that i'm not picky on nobody nothing like that so i get to the back they do my vitals and so um, they ask me if you so when i get her in the door the lady's speaking i go around the corner and as soon as i get around there there's a white girl sitting one place and then there's a black girl that's sitting closer to me. So I got on the scale, I think, first. And then uh when I as soon as I get around there, the ladies the, the white lady's like, she just staring me down. Like, y'all, she did not take her eyes off of me. And I and in my mind I'm thinking maybe she's trying to study me. You know, maybe she's looking at me to see what's going on. She's um paying attention to my weakness, paying attention to how I'm I'm trying to talk. Like, I could barely form a full sentence. Like, I couldn't even talk a full sentence. I had to say a few words, stop, get more energy, say a, a word, stop, force. You know, I had to force my words. So, but I'm paying attention to how she's looking at me because she's the one asking me questions. So, she was asking me, like, um, have you eaten today? Have you drank anything? What uh what are you, um what else did she ask? Um what's going on? Why are you here? She was asking just some questions. I'm like, girl, stop talking to me. Like I done told you why I'm here. Leave me alone. Check my vitals and shut up. Like and she just kept and she was talking so hard, like, what did you do today? What did you eat? What did you drink? And so I'm trying to tell her, like, I've been drinking all day. Um, this and this. I had breakfast, and by this time, you know, y'all told you I was headed to get something to eat, but backyard burger was closed, so that's where I was at that point. And this is that was my normal time to eat at that time, so it wasn't like I was out of hours after where I shouldn't after I should have eaten. That was my time to eat. So um, um, I'm like okay. I really couldn't even focus on her. Like my eyes was just down the whole time. I wasn't just looking anybody in their face because I'm just weak. 
So the other girl um, sat me down and she was the one that was entering everything in the computer. So she's telling the girl, the white girl is telling the black girl how to put the stuff in the computer because they're asking me questions about pregnancy, blah, blah, blah. And um, I told them about my blood pressure at the thing. They were like, is that why you came? I'm like, no, they didn't see me here. But I'm here because of that and how I started feeling. So um, then when she started to get my blood pressure, the white girl got up and did my blood pressure. And by this time, somebody else walked in and was asking me basically the same questions. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Um, So while she's asking me the questions, the white girl puts the blood pressure the blood pressure cuff on my arm and y'all she put it on my arm like i had already lifted up my arm for her just to be nice like lifted it up as i could but i guess i was doing it so slow i don't know what it was but she slapped it up under my arm and wrapped it around so tight and just slapped the velcro together and i'm and i'm looking like what the heck but I, i'm like okay maybe you know Maybe this is just how she is. She was trying to put it on fast. I don't I don't know. Because it wasn't like terribly just dead. But it wasn't like, y'all, yeah, I, I get this done enough. She did, did, did it worse than anybody I know. So I'm like, okay, maybe she, mm, I don't know. But then she just, she sat down. She kept staring. Like she was just mean mugging me. And so I um, they started the blood pressure reading. I'm talking to the lady. Or not talking at this point. I can't remember. Because uh, they was doing a blood pressure read. So when they got done. Like she jumped up. As soon as it got done. She ripped it off my arm. And snatched it from under my arm. And y'all. It took everything in me. Everything. To not say nothing to her. And so I'm looking. And I'm barely. And like imagine, I couldn't barely hold my head up. So I'm looking at the side of my eye. And I'm like. In my mind, I'm thinking, like, what the heck is wrong with her? Like, she was lucky that I couldn't talk. Like, I was too weak to even talk. I was, y'all. And it's pissing me off now because I couldn't say nothing. And y'all know I, I'm i going to say something. I'm going to say something. And it's, it's really, it really upset me that um, I couldn't. So, um, I get... They didn't tell me what my blood pressure was, so I don't even know what it was at that point. So the lady, another lady, walks me to my room, to the the little, to the room part, and she was like undressed from the waist down. And I'm like, why am I undressing from the waist down? But I'm thinking maybe I don't know. They're gonna look at my charge, check my service. I don't know what I thought they was gonna do. So I did it. Got in the bed. Um, first thing they did was the EKG. It was fine. They came and checked my sugar, glucose. It was 67, which I didn't learn. It was low. Um, they, Another lady came in, and she was like, I'm going to check your blood pressure. Um, so I'm thinking, at this point, I'm thinking, okay, my blood pressure when I first came in had to have been still low. So um, she came in. She checked it sitting up. No, she checked it laying down. And then she checked it sitting up. And it was like 116 over 70 something, I think. And then um, she had me to stand up and check it. And it was 110 over 57 or 110 over something. I could, I think 110 over 57. So I'm like, okay, well, it's back where it should be. But I, also by this time, I started feeling better. So I was feeling better than I was when I came in because I had been there. At this point, I had been there for a long time. Like an hour or two, maybe. So, um, I feel better because now my blood pressure is normal and I'm also feeling a little bit better. Now, mind you, I still had not had anything to drink in there. Or did I? I had my cup. But I don't think I was drinking like that. I don't think I had anything at this point. So, um, the, after that, I started getting sleepy and I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what I'm going to do because if they come in here now and discharge me, I'm not, I'm afraid I'm not going to be making home because like this point I am dead tired. So I'm like, okay, well, let me just lay here. And, um, I was like, Lord, I don't know what to do. So I was like, well, let me just go and go doze off to sleep. Let me go ahead and take a nap. Because at this point, I'm able to go to sleep. I feel like I feel sleepy and not just 
out of it. So, um, I ended up dozing, going to sleep really well, took a good nap. And when another lady came in, she woke me up. And so when she walked in, she was like, well, I guess you just needed to eat, huh? And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, well, I still ain't had, like, I had a bag of chips that I had ate in there. Um, uh, but they didn't check my sugar after that. So I'm like, she was, I'm like, how would you even know that it was correlating to my sugar? Like, I don't, I, I'm not understanding. How would you think, assume that it's my sugar or I needed something to eat? And even if that was the case, y'all didn't even know I ate anything. <laughs> so like, what are you talking about? Y'all just making assumptions. So anyway, I'm like, mm. And I told her, I said, well, yeah, I was supposed to be going to eat. And, um, but Backyard Burger was closed. So she was like, yeah, um, because of the water situation. She was like, yeah, that's, you know, sucks about, you know, with everything that's going on. So then she left out. And um, eventually, I think I lay down. I asked, could I go to, to the bathroom? So I went to the bathroom, came back, and sat around again. And then eventually, the the doctor that was there, um, came in. She was like, well, everything looks fine. Oh, they also did blood work. So it, my blood work was fine. I wasn't dehydrated. Um, n like nothing. So while I was, um, so I'm going to tell you what the doctor said first. So she was like, you're not dehydrated. Um, all your blood works look fine. No infection. Um, your EKG was normal. Uh, she said, but your sugar was low. She said, I didn't see anything else, so I'm just going to assume that it was your sugar. Um, so even she just assumed it was my sugar. So she was like, um, just make sure you, you know, don't skip a meal, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to send you home with um, discharge papers and instructions and things like that, and, you know, for low sugar. So, um, while I was, now, remember I told you when I got to the infusion center, um, my first blood pressure. So, as soon as I got hooked up with my infusion, I messaged my OB's uh, office, my OB, and told her about my, my, whew, my low blood pressure. So, I'm going to tell you, um... I'm going to read the message that I sent because this is another thing that kind of irritated me. Um, and it also kind of triggered me. Oh, mm -mm. Is it a com Okay, here it comes. Conversations. Because y'all know, like, I just don't get it. Um... This was September 1st. So, I start out by saying, no older messages. I say, good, after, good afternoon. I want to, I wanted to send a message because I am at the hemat, I am at hematology getting my infusion and upon checking my blood pressure, she, she said it was 94 over 52 for the first one and 90 over 44 during recheck. I've had it drop before during this pregnancy under the care of my first OB, but at an appointment at another clinic. Um, I mentioned it to her and she wasn't concerned. I wanted to bring it to your attention because I've never seen it as low as 90 over 44 during a routine check. And what I meant by that is I've had low, brush, low blood pressure like that before, but it was when I was septic with... Um, after I delivered my first son, when I had the infection in my body, I was septic and it was causing, and like my blood pressure was bottoming out. So, um, I said, I wanted to bring it to your attention, uh, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, please advise on if this is or can be an issue. Thank you. So she texted me, she messaged me back, but I didn't get it until I was at the emergency room. She said, are you feeling dizzy, lightheaded, or weak? Have you been drinking plenty of liquids slash water? Thank you. And I had sent my uh, initial message to the doctor, but I guess 
a nurse of hers read it because it's, it's another name on here and not my doctor. Um, so I text, I messaged back and said, I got dizzy and lightheaded when I left driving home. So I'm here at the emergency room. I've been drinking on water periodically throughout the day. Which, you know, when I was at Target, I had my water bottle. Um, I have been drinking it on it all day. She said, okay, I see your, and this is the next day, the next morning. She said, okay, I, I see your emergency room note. Glad you are feeling better. I said, thank you. And I said, they also didn't address my blood pressure issue because I'm assuming by the time I got there, the first check was back normal. I would like it noted in my charts about the random drops and to be discussed at my next appointment, please. I would also like to know what is considered too low so that I may be aware if it happens again and if I need to seek emergency care. She says, your blood pressure, I believe, was 110 over 70 at the hospital. Remember, I did check it four times. Um, don't know what the first one or the second one was, but the third was 116 over 70 something. And the last one was 110 over 57. So I, I don't know where the 110 over 70 comes from unless that was the first one. But they don't even have it noted anywhere in my discharge papers or anything. Um, the only one that's noted in my discharge papers is the 110 over 57. So I'm not sure where she got this from. How She said, however, when you get to, to the top number being in the 90s, and lower no she said when you get to the top number being in the 90s and lower number 60s or below that is low blood pressure you need to make sure that you are drinking plenty of water as dehydration can cause your blood pressure to drop since you are pregnant you should be drinking eight or more glasses of water per day thank you then she mentioned back and said if you start feeling weak faint lightheaded or dizzy you need to be evaluated at hospital I said, yes, because at this point, I'm irritated. Like, why are you mentioning what my blood pressure was at the emergency room? That's not, not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the one that was before that, which was right before I started feeling bad. She said, I said, yes, my pressure yesterday was 90 over 44 at the hematology center. Afterwards is when I started feeling the symptoms. That's what initially made me go to the emergency room. I also wasn't dehydrated, so it wasn't from that. And the drops have happened on multiple occasions during this pregnancy, as I've mentioned to my previous OB, but she never cared to acknowledge or address it. I will be persons at home monitor to keep record for myself as I do have symptoms while I'm home from time to time. Thank you. I will make note to be seen when needed. After that, she didn't, um, she reviewed, she looked at it or whoever looked at it, the doctor or the same girl, but they didn't respond. So, I just let it go, and um, but I just be sure to um mention these things because normally I've gotten things like this. Um, I mentioned it to my doctors, and they either don't note it in my charts, and or they don't address it or tell me what's going on. So I like I know that within the first twenty four weeks or so, your blood pressure can drop and it will, um, but. I'm more concerned, as they told me to be, when I'm having symptoms of lightheaded dizziness and um, weakness and fatigue, like bad, like I have that all the time. Uh, so I did give me a monitor. Oh, and I also, yeah, I remember the girl that I told y'all about. I sent the mer I, a note about that. I told him I said I visited the urgent visited the urgent care on yesterday. And I just wanted to say that one of the ladies that did my vitals, blood pressure specifically, was very rough. Throwing the cuff on and snatching it off as if I was a problem for her. I was too weak to even dress her, address her at the moment, but I did not appreciate that. There were two, a black girl and a white. I didn't get their names, so I'm sorry to address them by color, but it was the white girl who I did not appreciate. Um. Also, it says... Last review by staff September 2nd at 10.39 a.m. So they reviewed it the next day. So I don't know who, and I'm just not seeing this, so I don't know who reads it because I have to send this to customer service. Like, you can do message anybody in this god doggone thing. So I don't know. But, um, yeah, so I made sure to send a message about that too because y'all ain't going to play games with me. 
And if I go up there next time, if I have to go back and I'm see her, oh, I'm going to let her know. But anyway, so um, I did end up buying me a blood pressure cuff. Um, I went to Walmart and got one. So I got this one. I don't know. I hate for this minute. This video to be 30 minutes long, but oh, it's the equate. So I got the equate. So it's this one, and it also goes. It's the, um. I didn't realize that they sold the ones that go on the arm, the arm cuffs in the store, but they do. I because I was going to get the um. The one that you know on the wrist, because that's the one that I've most main ones I've seen in stores. So I just got that one. It was only fifty. I can't remember. If that was fifty two or fifty seven. So it was like fifty something dollars worth it for me. I got it, and um, I've been checking my blood pressure at least at least three times a day. I have it set for ten three and ten thirty. But if I'm feeling bad at any point of the day, I will check it. Um, so I've been kind of okay but i've noticed each day i do get a drop and it goes below 90 it goes below 100 and below 60 so both of which she said is low blood pressure but um i haven't mentioned it because like i said i do know that when you are pregnant um these things can happen um but also, I haven't really just mentioned it because I haven't felt too terrible. The worst I felt is just extreme fatigue during the times that I have low blood pressure. Like, I'll be fine throughout the day, and then I'll get to a point where my body just, like, I just crash out. Like, I can't do anything. I don't want to do anything. I sit here, um, you know, just moping. And so, that's when I'm checking. I realize my blood pressure is low. Um, And this could be it. I want to say any point of the day. Well, really, it could be at any point of the day. Anyway, um, I'm just going to leave this part here because, like I said, I dragged the video out long enough. Um, But that was the situation behind that. So, this is what the app looks like. So, I forgot to say, with the blood pressure thing, it monitors. So, this is the first one that I started out with. I hope that's not backwards. If it is, I'll try to flip it. I don't know how. But it monitors, like it syncs all of your data. So once you get done with the um, pressure, you just pull up the app and it'll automatically send it over there. You hit uh, confirm and save and that's it. And it stores it for you. Uh, even if you miss a couple of, um, even if you don't have your phone with you when you're checking it a couple of times, when you do, the next time you do, say for instance, you checked it four times without your phone. On that fifth time when you go check it and you have your phone, you open the app and it'll say, it'll say the reading for today and it'll say plus four other readings and you hit confirm and save and it'll save all of those. So you won't miss out. I don't know how many to do without skipping some, but I only check it maybe once without my phone, without pulling, like say for instance, I'm checking it now. Then I know I'm going to check it a few minutes later. Later, I don't pull my phone up until the second time and then save both of them. So, um, that's how that works. But anyway, I'm going to continue with that. And I didn't, I kept forgetting today was Monday and I would have messaged my office, my husband, had to um, work the weekend, so it kind of, well, Saturday, so it kind of threw me off on my days, but tomorrow, I will send them a record of, because I don't think I see the OB, OB until either Friday or next week, so let me see if I can see really quick, yeah, so I don't see my regular OB um, until September 16th. I'm going to say nurse practitioner. She's a nurse practitioner. So I don't see the nurse practitioner until the 16th. But I see the MFM on Wednesday. This Wednesday. 
so we'll see but for now that's what's been going on um i'm probably gonna go ahead and record the next um my symptoms and things like that now while the kids are quiet i think one of them is asleep i need to go wake him up but um yeah i'm gonna do a quick video after this so if i have on the same shirt then that's why but anyway i will see you guys in the next video